Hello, wanted to talk today about ENTJs and kind of how we operate in the world and why people have a difficult time really relating to us. And I've really only met very few other ENTJs, so I'm going to do a lot from my perspective. Every Myers-Briggs type is going to be different. Um, each person in that type is going to be different too, so it's not like one ENTJ is going to be exactly like another ENTJ or another INFP is going to be exactly like an INFP. Um, one thing about ENTJs that people really fail to understand is how we really feel. What may come out doesn't mean exactly how we feel on the inside. And it's funny that I'm actually addressing that because uh, ENTJs are known not to feel. But we really do have deep sentiment. We have uh, deep emotions, but we have a hard time cutting through the logic to get to that point. Sometimes we just feel things and we don't even understand what they are. We try to rationalize it, but sometimes we know that feelings can be rationalized. Uh, so it makes it hard to really relate our feelings. So everything we do on a daily basis is going to be based on our judgment using thinking or what we call e, the extroverted thinking, the TE function. So I'll start with TE so I can explain how we operate and then I'll move into the lesser functions. I will say that FI will not be easy for me to explain because uh, it's a very difficult function for ENTJs to not rationalize. I would have to explain it in the feeling sense and so I'll do my best. So the first thing about ENTJs is the TE function. And the TE function is essentially the function of extroverted thinking or what we call inductive reasoning or empirical thinking or creating logical order out of things. So uh, one particular thing that really stands out about an ENTJ is the ability to create order out of things. You'll find this a lot in ESTJs too. Both of us have the same similarity. Um, there's a difference in these two personality types, but they come off as the, using the logic in the same manner. So it may, originally, you may have a hard time distinguishing if you're an ESTJ or if you're, you're an ENTJ. Um, but you'll see that what we use, we rely on that logic the same exact way. It's sequential thinking, so it's putting uh, logical order. So if we know and we universally accept that 1 plus 1 equals 2, we're going to use that now. We don't care why 1 plus 1 equals 2. We want to apply that to the real world. How do we make this external? How do we create, use that knowledge to build a uh, empire? Whatever our goal is for the particular thing, um, creating order out of that. So that is one of um, um, that is one of the things that we really focus on. I apologize for that, by the way. That was an interruption here. Let me go ahead and mute this so you don't hear any more of those. Okay. So anyway, uh, extroverted thinking is creating that order out of things so you get a good grip on things that are logical. So we really do well in business because business is a very rational thing. ENTJs are more prone to succeed in business than some other types. Not that any other type will naturally fall subject to the ENTJ's will to power, um, but it does mean that ENTJs have a natural advantage. It doesn't mean they're always successful in business. It just means that we naturally understand it in a different level. Uh, coming out of the gate. But if you get a lazy NTJ, which is rare, by the way, because of the way we're structured, then, uh, yeah, I mean, you can pass an ENTJ up. It doesn't matter what type you are. And a, each type has an equal chance for success, depending on a core value of work ethic. That's another topic. I don't want to talk about that here. I'm just going through the cognitive functions to be able to explain how these operate in the real world. So, TE. Oh, and again, uh, I apologize. I'm going to be moving a lot. I typically do a lot of presentations, so I like to walk, but I have a very limited space here. So if I'm shifting, it's not because I'm nervous or anxiety. It's just because I'm, I like to walk when I present. So anyway, apologize if that's distracting. But anyway, so TE is the sequential order of things. Our secondary function is introverted intuition, which is your NI function. This to me is one of the most interesting functions because it's seeing things in a world of possibilities. So we tend to um, lose focus sometimes on what's right in front of us. This creates uh, uh, ENTJs to be a little more absent-minded. It doesn't mean absent-minded like, oh, on simple things. It means that sometimes we lose touch with what's real and we get so involved in our possibilities that we will do everything we can to use our TE to make that a possibility. So, for example, we may have a, 
a large delusion of grandeur and we believe it because we spend time in introverted intuition and we drive use TE in every way, shape, and form to make that a possibility. This is why we come off as extremely aggressive um, and direct and assertive and very focused on our end goal because the, it's, the, it's the NI visions that provide the fuel for the TE to, we, to, for us to go use the TE in the real world like a bulldozer. Okay, so uh, we just run over whatever it takes to make that possibility real. So once we catch a vision, it's a, uh, it's pretty tough to get an ENTJ off course. It's like a bulldozer in the sense of, it's well calculated because of the uh, the uh, TE function and the NI working together to create that kind of symbiosis um, thing. It also creates a little bit of synergy, so they work very well together. The difference between a, a an ENTJ and an ESTJ is their secondary function is introverted into uh, introverted sensing. So they are going to back their TE up with sensing. So an adherence to duty, values, that kind of thing. Um, so they tend to be, in the sense, more loyal. Um, ESTJs are duty fulfillers. They feel like it's obligation to create order. So they're very structured, even more so than a uh, ENTJ. Uh, ESTJs are very detail-oriented to the point where they aren't absent-minded. They are always creating order of everything. And ENTJs, on the other hand, we create order on things that move toward our goal. Um, so we tend to be focused on order and something. So it's not unlikely to see an ENTJ with a... Uh, Let's say with a actually it's hard to it's hard to relate because it depends on what it is. Sorry, I'm doing ad living all this by the way. So, uh, but for example, it wouldn't be surprising to find an ENTJ who has chaos in one area of their life, but complete order in the other area of their life, for the sole fact that that one area that is chaos has nothing to do with the 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 vision that they've created. So they don't care to organize it or use TE to make it a possibility. Um, ENTJs are, tend to be a little meticulous. Uh, one of the reasons why is because they're absent-minded. They always, everything has its place. We are creatures of habit, but we hate routine. Um, absolutely hate routine. Routine is just something we can't stand, but then we have our own little routines. It's almost like we consistently live in a dichotomy because we hate other routines imposed on us, but we create routines out of everything using TE. ESTJs love routine a lot more. They love routine in the sense of it doesn't matter who imposes it as long as it fulfills the introverted sensing functions duty. Uh, if that routine is imperative to whatever they're assigned to, the, whatever their objective is, they're going to make it happen. So an ESTJ would, like a, a child ESTJ, would be more likely to, uh, if they're on a good relationship with their parents, obey all the laws that their parents have set forth for them, or most of them, the majority of them, as long as it aligns with the introverted sensing values that they have established for themselves. So that's the secondary function of the ENTJ. The tertiary function, the third fun function of the ENTJ, on the, on the ENTJ is the function of what we call extroverted sensing. Um, this is the opposite on the introverted extroverted scale compared to what ESTJ has. So uh, the extroverted sensing function is an interesting function because it allows us to uh, see an object as, or whatever the area of focus is, as a, uh, an object that can be manipulated. Again, Here's three things that are talking about creating external order for the NTJ, but an object that can be manipulated because the object is a, a separate from your self-identity. So uh, I may say that these sunglasses here are, uh, they exist without me. They don't, my, my feelings about them doesn't change their value. It doesn't, uh, it's an object to be enjoyed and used. And it's not, it doesn't relate to internal value of particular it doesn't change the value of the object. Essentially, extroverted sensing is taking advantage of things in the real world um, and being a little more bold in objects and their reality. Uh, introverted sensing is your perception and stored data storage house of information 
that uh, that is different from extroverted sensing. I'm sorry, that probably made no sense. Let me let me uh, rearrange that. Um, I'm gonna repeat that. So cut that last part out. Let me say that the difference between introverted sensing and extroverted sensing is introverted sensing is like a storehouse of data of what works, what doesn't work, and uh, being a creature of habit because something is more successful. Um, extroverted sensing typically is going to be something like I'm willing to play with ideas that are external to see what may create a new possibility when it's backed by introverted intuition. So uh, with that being said, extroverted sensing typically are people who want to go enjoy things in the world a little more than say introverted sensors who understand things as they are. So structure in that regard. So uh, introverted sensors tend to be a little more structured. Extroverted sensors tend to be a little more playful in the environment. So somebody with extroverted sensing as their primary function is going to be a lot more playful in the environment than someone who is an introverted sensor. An introverted sensor will do the same thing over and over again as long as it generates the same type of feeling. Um, they're okay with it. Extroverted sensors tend to like to play with new things to create a, uh, a new way of doing things to challenge possibilities and to uh, play with the environment a little more. So the final function of introverted feeling for an ENTJ, introverted feeling is very, very, very complex for me to explain. Uh, I will say that it's going against the grain and basing things on their subjective opinion, um, your value, a code. It's a judgment function, not a perceiving function like sensing and intuition is. So um, the, the, you can only use really, it's almost mutually exclusive. If I'm making a decision, it's either going to be a feeling-based or a thinking-based decision. It's not going to be a both-based decision. And I'm operating in extroverted thinking or I'm operating in introverted feeling. And so the more I'm using extroverted thinking, the less I'm using introverted feeling and vice versa. So uh, because I, me personally, am very dominant in extroverted thinking, I am very unlikely to use introverted feeling when making decisions. Introverted feeling is deep sentiments and uh, subjective values, such as something is being good or bad, I am not likely to pick up a pair, these pair of sunglasses and go, those are bad sunglasses or those are good sunglasses. I'm more likely to say what these sunglasses provide to a particular consumer and the benefits of these sunglasses to this consumer versus the benefits of these sunglasses to that consumer um, and that kind of thing. So I'm not value judgment this based on feeling. It's not good or bad. It's good for one person, it's bad for another person based on these logical criteria. So it's not just a value base. I can't point at somebody and say, that's a bad person. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say this person has a, a negative quality and it's reinforced by this decision they made. But it doesn't mean that person in general is a bad person. When you ask an ENTJ to make a value judgment, typically we get hamstrung, it's hamstrung in that process. So if you were to come to me and ask me to make a value judgment, uh, do you think this person's a bad person? You're going to get this kind of hesitation from an ENTJ, like, well, um, uh, um, the, well, he's not exactly a bad person. He just has this particular quality and this quality. And again, we rationalize and logic base everything. So you're going to run into that problem a lot with an ENTJ or even an ESTJ, because both of us have the dominant extroverted thinking and the very, very inferior introverted thinking. So uh, you're going to get that a lot with ESTJs and ENTJs um, in that regard. So it's going to be difficult to be able to determine the difference based on their way they make judgments. Their difference is in the way they perceive. And uh, you'll notice that the ESTJs uh, perception is based on sensing introverted and then uh, mainly, and then the ENTJs is based on introverted intuition. So ENTJs tend to be very, very, very crazy outside the box, long-term range, big picture thinking people. And ESTJs, not that they don't think big picture, but tend to be more detail oriented here and now. Um, in a business sense, ESTJs would make great operating officers day to day. They can make great CEOs. Um, that are more focused on day-to-day -day operations or product development. Uh, ENTJs typically have crazy visions and they pile drive. They tend to be very authoritative. Both of these personality types are very aggressive. Um, they both want to create order and control. Uh, 
in a hierarchy, ENTJs do less. ENTJs have a harder time working for ESTJs than the other way around. Um, ENTJs typically feel like ESTJs limit their visions and sometimes don't hear them and listen to them because ESTJs are more focused on fulfilling the duty versus looking at big crazy ideas. Um, and sometimes ENTJs do get carried away with their ideas. It's about this crazy idea, let's make it happen, and we just explode with all kinds of new introverted intuition uh, ways to go. And I mean, it's, uh, hey, let's uh, create this big vision, and here's how we're going to do that. Now, uh, this leads into another topic of the difference between introverted intuition and the difference between extroverted intuition. Uh, some may think that crazy ideas are an extroverted intuition function, and that is rightfully true. Uh, crazy ideas popping out of nowhere is a very extroverted intuitive function. Um, introverted intuition comes with ideas based on patterns acquired through life. We don't really create our own ideas. We bring ideas together and conceptualize a new idea. Example is I'll be sitting at a conference, sitting from one person, another person, another person. This person may say A, this person, person may say B, and this person may say C, and in the past I've heard D, E, and F, and now I've created, the, I put those ideas together and I create this grand idea like, whoa, this is a crazy possibility, we can really make this work. So um, we find ways to apply things we've heard and stored in the past based on those patterns. On the other hand, a uh, extroverted intuitive doesn't need A, B, and C, and D. They just can just sit there and magically look at something and boom, here's an explosion of ideas that just come out of nowhere and I really don't understand it because I don't use it very much. Um, but they're very creative and they're very explosive and uh, they, they're volatile. Extroverted intuitives are really impressive to me because they have that capability to do that. I admire extroverted intuitives. Um, because of that, they have that powerhouse, random fact of uh, genius that comes from nowhere, and it, it seems like it comes from nowhere. Somehow they they sort it out. But so an ESTJ has that. It's a weaker function in the ESTJ, so they're not likely to use it a lot. But when an ESTJ is working on something, let's say doing their duty, and they they may just go, "Whoa, we need to do this." And it just comes out of nowhere because they see something and they go, we can improve this. And then they improve it followed by using that sense of duty. But if it doesn't apply to that sense of duty, which is their introverted sensing, they'll totally let go of the idea because they're obligated. On the other hand, uh, an ENTJ's introverted intuition, they're going to chase an idea as long as it has rationale to it. And as long as it's that extroverted sensing gives them that kind of crazy adventurous, I want to try this idea, I don't care what it takes, let's make it happen. Um, an ESTJ is going to be like, well, you know, people have tried that in the past and it's less likely to work. So an ESTJ is a little more practical in that sense, but uh, both types are very similar. But that's really the difference between the two. I'll be more than happy to provide more information. Anyway, thank you.